ยรอยปีกรรมวิธีอบรมมวยปีใบมวยร้อยดอกรำมวยร้อยดอกประมวยมวยร้อยดอกประปีมวยร้อยดอกประใบมวยร้อยดอกประบุญมวยร้อยมาเพยมวยร้อยมาเพยในตีปีเนี่ยสาวนเมียนมาร้อยมาเพยเนตีปีเนสซาปอดเมียนชายรมไล่ปีบอดปีสาวนังปัญญาฮะประชมเนียนี้ระบาดเนสซาปอดเมียนปีเซสเตรจเนสซาปอดเมียนในกัมพูชีมวยร้อยมาเพยเนตีปีเนสซาปอดเมียนผลัดดอยวิชูอัฟอเมรอยปีอปทอมนังกอมโตรทักวิกาดอยสมาคมอันตรจิตสตรีทวกับนายวิชูนังตุรตุ The International Association of Women in Radio and Television IAWRT สหการจมวยมันโดนซาปอดมินหนึ่งประปอนสับไซอันตรายจิต JMIC ระบบสกอปเชลัยโอสโลเมโตรโพลิตินโปรเตโนเวสตามระยะสมาคมสตรีทวกาพนักวิชุหนึ่งตุรตุกัมพูชี IAWRT เคมบูเดียชัปเตอร์ฟรอมพนมเปญแคปิตอลซิตี้มายแนมอิสุกุนที่ไอวูดไลค์ทูเพย์มายรีสเพคทูออลเดอะลิสเซเนอร์หูอาลิสเซนิงทูรัตโจเอฟเอ็มวันโอทูแอนเดอะลิสเซเนอร์หูลิสเซนฟรอมพนมเปญกำปองจามแอนบัดดับบอง I would like to also pay respect to all the listeners that listen through our Facebook page 102. Uh, this program we get the uh, financial and sponsor support from the International Association of Women in Radio and Television (IAWRT) in collaboration with JMIC of Oslo Metropolitan uh, Norway through. I A W R T Cambodia Chapter Challenge for the Women Journalists in Cambodia. Uh, you are going to hear uh, from our uh, expert speaker. 102 minutes. The secret from the journalist. This is our, our telephone number that you may call in to uh, join the discussion with us. Ask the question all together, or you may join our Facebook uh, page of FM 102 in Khmer script and Latin script. Maroi ma pay niti pinak sa po dumin. Maroi ma pay niti pinak kampang rabon nak sa po dumin. Dal nek mentrok ban dang. มาร้อยมาเพยนตีปีเนี่ยสาปอลมิ้นโซนดับปีปรำร้อยมาเพยปรำปีมรอยปีโซนดับปรำปรำปีรอยมาเพยมรอยปีโซนเกาสับปรำปีแปดสับปีเกาสับมรอยปีตุรสับโจรวมขนมกรรมวิธีระบบบรรจุเอฟเอ็มมรอยปีสัวสำนัวนั่งมาเตะโยบายแตงอ๊อกเนียหรือโจรวมตามระยะตรงปอเฟซบุ๊กบรรจุเอฟเอ็มมรอยปีดามิ้นชมูบรรจุจีอาซอกไม้หนึ่งเอฟเอ็มมรอยปีจีอาซอกลาตัน I would like to pay my respect to the speakers thank you so much Uh, professor, uh, so today we are going to meet our uh, professor. The, uh, that uh, we are going to discuss about the challenge for the women uh, journalists. We are meeting with a uh, professor Chai Supal. He is the professor of uh, media. He is well known in Cambodia. And as um, for the audience and listener, you can also join us through the uh, Facebook of FM 102 or through the telephone uh, number that we informed earlier. We have uh, three different lines that you can call in uh, during the discussion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, have you ever known before that in terms of fulfilling our fulfill our tasks and obligation, the women journalists, what are the challenges that they have and what level of risk that they have? So, if you have any question or comment, feel free to join with us in our program right now. Uh, Beside uh, the uh, uh, discussion for uh, 15 minutes, we will also have another interview with Ms. Yum Sotiri, the uh, psychologist and the psychotherapist, as well as the uh, uh, consultant for uh, conflict and peace uh, on the small research that Sotiri focuses on violence and abuse. Uh, against the uh, women journalists, so we will uh, play that short uh, interview clip uh, for the listener as well. But before we move 
to the uh, clip of the interview. Uh, let's get back to our uh, session a little bit. Uh, uh, my respect to Professor Chai Supal. So, uh, can you tell us about the general situation of the women journalists in Cambodia in like current situation? Uh, first, I would like to pay my respect to all the audience, the listener uh, uh, of one o- FM 102, especially for the uh, uh, 120 minutes. Uh, Kunti are uh, flattering me. Um, I'm not like a well-known or outstanding professor. I'm just a normal professor. And I want to take this opportunity to appeal for the women uh, journalists. If you haven't received the uh, vaccination of COVID-19, uh, please go and have the shots. And especially uh, the uh, female journalists in the province, if you have any problem, you can receive the treatment in the province. No need to uh, make the trip to Phnom Penh at all. If we talk about challenge, people might only think only about the um, difficulty, about the uh, negative part. But of course, uh, we will try to focus more on those challenges. But before I uh, describe about the challenge for the female, uh, can I cut you off a little bit? Because we only focus on the uh, general situation. We don't go straight into the challenge yet. Uh, so I would like to say that whenever we want to talk about the challenge or uh, the uh, negative point, uh, we need to look at the uh, journalists or media institution in Cambodia first. When we talk about the institution, the problem are different. There are many different type of the uh, media institution in Cambodia, include the government uh, institution. We know that all the journalists are the um, uh, government servant that get a salary from the government. Second, we have uh, the private uh, media. Uh, some private media also have like political tendency. Uh, some uh, they are neutral, and some other they report based on the uh, uh, non-ruling parties. Uh, the other group is like the uh, CSO media uh, group that they uh, get a sponsor totally from foreigner, and they do advertisements uh, and commercial as well. Uh, the the other group they get totally a uh, funding from the uh, government or assembly of a uh, foreign country we also have the uh, media uh, agency that they sell the the news they sell the pictures they sell the uh, uh, media to the world like uh, rector afp ap etc those are the uh, institution of the uh, foreign uh, country that they sell news uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, government agency overseas. For example, uh, VNA of Vietnam, Sinhua, uh, they belong to the government uh, in the uh, foreign states. We also have, we can call like a citizen media. They are like... Uh, uh, they are the citizen, and we can see that CSO train many citizens to, to become the journalists. The other group of journalists, not not many, but they are like the freelancer. Those freelancer they don't have their own institution. They only sell news and picture and photo. Uh, whenever they uh, get the news, then they can sell it out. And for the social media right now, we can see that they are like the uh, Facebook uh, journalists or uh, TV Facebook. They call themselves. Some register with Ministry of Information and some do not register. So again, I just want to get your attention that uh, to focus on different type of institution, media institution in Cambodia. The situation of the uh, journalists in the uh, current situation, especially for the uh, women journalists, they uh, have different role and responsibility according to their institution. In uh, general, we can say that the situation has been much, much better, especially if we uh, compare uh, to the time that some, like the Joe met with the uh, journalists, like annual meeting with the journalists. It has been a couple of years that we haven't met because of COVID-19, but uh, however, the situation has been better. Thank you, Professor. Now, 
we are going to continue our discussion. But before I ask uh, you the question, uh, allow me to uh, take your attention and all the listener to listen to the interview with uh, Ms. James Thierry, the psychologist and the uh, psychotherapist that have conducted a small research focused on violence and abuse against the uh, women journalists. And that research have been um, uh, prepared for the uh, workshop that focus on the challenge for the uh, women journalists. Uh, now uh, I want to invite the speaker and the listener to uh, please uh, listen to the video clip of interview with Ms. Thierry. At that time, me and the uh, Cambodia team, we uh, conducted the workshop with the women journalists. Before that training, uh, we uh, have a small meeting uh, with this participant. We bring uh, the topic to this car to show in this workshop to show that it's not just one woman journalist that said that violence and abuse occur with the with me as the female uh, the woman journalist. At least among the ten and twenty of people, sixty seventy percent. I mean, everyone said that they have been uh, abused. Uh, they do not get enough encouragement from the family, from the boss, uh, from the uh, partner, or the family member, or the spouse at all. And so that they can realize that, oh, it's not me alone that uh, face the problem. We can see that there have been a lot of problems that the women journalists face. A similar problem, but they haven't heard. They did not know about other. They feel like they would like to quit to hire. They think they face it alone. So we bring them all together to share. Uh, we have similar problem. It's the same, the common issue that we can discuss. And after we uh, uh, find out about this, at the end, when we close the um, workshop, there was the uh, donor from USAID, US Embassy that joined with us, and Ministry of Women Affairs, Ministry of Information, Justice, all uh, came to join us during the closing ceremony as well. And we present our finding to them so that they can start to consider and to hear the voice of the women journalists and continue to um, work on the establishment of uh, law regulation and policy uh, in order for them to pay more attention, to consider seriously. Uh, it's not just by word, but to really consider that this is the real voice. It's not just uh, the report from anyone else, but the voice of the directly from themselves. Those people that come to the workshop with, with us, we focus on abuse and violence against women. Uh, journalists, their needs and uh, their mental health, what they expected. We find out that almost every of them face abuse and violence, GBV, as they are the female journalists, especially when they go to collect news, even at daytime, particularly at night time. There were some kind of words like harassment, uh, verbally, and uh, pressure, emotional uh, impact on them. For example, they see the woman journalist going to get the news, trying to get into the crowded or chaos, and uh, people might touch their physical, their body. This is like the form of harassment and abuse against the uh, woman, and some verbal abuse, like say, oh, you are that pretty, pretty. She should not uh, be uh, the journalist, go to sell the lotion online, stay at home, take care of the kid. Why is it necessary for you to work like this? So this is kind of a form of uh, abuse. And also for uh, the night work, I mean going out to work at night, uh, they also face different forms of abuse. Thank you. Uh, I think the professor and all the listeners have heard uh, the result uh, from the uh, uh, research that uh, Ms. Jim uh, Sotiri have just presented to us that the uh, women journalists face the abuse. Uh, can be like verbal abuse. You are that pretty. How can you work as a journalist? You should, ha uh, you should not like go to take um to collect the news at night time, and we hear the physical harassment that like they uh, try to touch the woman when they try to get into the crowd to 
to capture information. So uh, again, I want to ask the professor, what do you think about those challenges that the women have? Uh, I totally agree with what uh, she has raised. Of course, uh, we see it practically. However, it uh, happened, uh, I think, let's say for the last five years, I, uh, it's really happened. Uh, I, I agree. I do not uh, have any objection. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about the risk, we need to look at the uh, uh, journalist or media institution. There are different types of uh, institution, and the women might face different crises or challenges. Let me uh, talk about the common issue or problem that they have as the journalist. Let's say about the family. The family, is it a single woman? Uh, they have a uh, challenge. The family might think that, like let's say the parents might be worried about the daughter because the, the media, I mean the journalist, you need to finish the deadline. Sometimes um, it's occur immediately, for example, like uh, the stamp, uh, stamp it in a, a Gothic island. People arrive home and it just occur. So you have to return immediately. Maybe your boss just call you immediately. You need to write it at home or at anywhere immediately and you work at night time as necessary. So the parents are worried about the, their children. Uh, let's talk about the married women. If they have children, there, there will be more pressure. I mean from the husband. If the husband is someone that understands, it should be fine. But if He's not understand. It should be a problem. The uh, household chore uh, pressure. It's difficult for them. Uh, second point at workplace. Like uh, uh, we hear from uh, the lady earlier, there are many problems. The uh, work pressure. Sometimes uh, during the discussion at work, sometimes the men, I mean, because there are uh, less uh, women at work, so uh, men are dominant in terms of decision making at workplace. That might result on the emotional uh, impact on the women. I know, you know, sometimes it's human being, you get angry. And of course, uh, discrimination. I, I think it has been uh, decreased significantly at workplace because the uh, female um, uh, journalists, they have good education, bachelor or something before they start to work. So the education should be similar. Uh, the other thing is about safety. Safety, I mean, going back home at night as well as safety or security while uh, uh, implementing their job. Let's say they go to collect news uh, during uh, the crisis or accidents. For example, there was demonstration uh, or riot. If it is the strike or like violent strike, uh, they could be uh, injured because of the rock, the stone people throw. So again, that is the risk for the uh, women journalists. Uh, it's, it's challenging. Sometimes there was like the fire and they need to, to run there quickly, they need to move around to try to get uh, news. So I, I can see that it, it is challenging even myself. Uh, with my 20 years of experience uh, as a journalist and 10 years of teaching, I know that it, it's sometimes difficult. And I agree about harassment. Uh, let's say uh, uh, sexual harassment. Uh, sexual harassment um, that refer to in terms of like verbal uh, harassment that uh, focus on like the eye roll on her like uh, uh, beh behavior those are sexual harassment act uh, however I think that at the workplace uh, it has been decreased they, they work together like brother and sister but whenever they go out uh, of course, I can see that uh, it's, it, it's true, it happened. Especially uh, uh, during the press conference uh, that uh, happened immediately that all the journalists like crowded, you try to push in to really put your microphone close to the speaker. So it's hard, the, the women journalists have to kind of to struggling to really get inside. They are the, the men, the bodyguard there, it's difficult. Some people might touch 
accidentally touch her or some just intentionally touch her uh, like we hear from the other speaker the other thing is the uh, uh, social value i mean the way that um, I, I think that now the uh, society give a better value to the uh, women journalists. Let's say uh, the dissemination of our sport, we can say women write a lot of good articles, much, much better than men. How can I say that? Because uh, during the work, men, after work, they finish work, they go out and drink, right? Women, after work, they go back home. And uh, they still have a good brain, right, to work. So it looks like the women can write a better report than men. Again, uh, that is related to uh, the uh, social uh, work. I think uh, about COVID-19, it caused another uh, challenge as well. However, it's not just uh, the uh, women uh, journalists. Even other women, they they f have uh, the same challenges. Particularly for women journalists, they use a lot of energy and they use their brain a lot. And using brain, it's not easy. Uh, I I I I do appreciate them. Some even write it in foreign language. They try to get the news and they even write it in the foreign language. It's quite good. However, uh, I, I I let me finish by now. Uh, thank you, Professor. That is your um, perspective toward the uh, research finding of Ms. Yim Sutiri that uh, focus on the uh, women journalists uh, that face the uh, abuse or uh, harassment or uh, physical harassment. Uh, now we open uh, to get the uh, phone call from the listener. Uh, what do you think in terms of the challenge of the uh, women journalists in Cambodia. You can uh, join us through uh, uh, our uh, line, that we have three lines. Uh, today, a uh, 120 minutes program, we discuss about the challenge of the uh, female journalists in Cambodia with uh, the presence of uh, Professor Chai Supal. So now let's meet uh, Mr. Soriya in Phnom Penh. Soriya, Professor, speaker. Uh, I listened to the sport earlier, uh, consider the challenge for the uh, women journalists that uh, there was like a verbal abuse or touching. Uh, I want to ask the professor, as you are uh, the, uh, the professor, right, the teacher, right? In order to avoid this, to uh, for the uh, women journalists to avoid those problems. Uh, we do not talk about the family uh, situation. Let's say they go to get news in one place, and that place the people do not cooperate, do not give them any news or even like uh, use like uh, uh, violence or uh, ha verbal harassment against the women journalists. In order to avoid it, what, what, what can we do? What should be the measure? To, to avoid this? That is my first question. Uh, uh, how There are the challenges. How can we avoid this? As you are the uh, professor, uh, before they go to get news in any place, uh, what should be the measure taken before they go? Uh, second, I noticed that... The, Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, the women journalists, they write the news very well, right? You mentioned because they do not drink, they still have good brain. When they collect news from anywhere, they are fresh, they sit down and write. But for the uh, uh, men uh, journalists, they go out and uh, get drunk. Sometimes they might lose the news or maybe they do not write it correctly. So my question for you, in order to write a very good article to ensure that we can avoid the fake or the uh, not good um, uh, news, what can the journalists do to avoid those problems? Uh, to avoid that maybe some news is fake, it's not uh, true. Uh, let's say in the past, we have heard the uh, uh, journalists in uh, England that uh, they write something uh, uh, connected to uh, 
the passport and some other information. Uh, they write some uh, information, uh, some news that we think that's not true. So uh, later on, uh, it was admitted that it was wrong. So in order to avoid the wrong examination, uh, uh, what what can the journalist do? That's all my question for you. Thank you. Thank you, so yeah, uh, Now let's take uh, someone else. Oh, Professor, we lost a uh, connection, so please answer. Uh, apologize. Uh, we have one more call now. from uh, 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 Please, your question. Uh, thank you, Sukunti. Uh, first, uh, uh, Professor Sopal. Uh, generally, I think uh, it is important for the program today. It's really a good uh, program because I think that uh, news, it's like the three meals for us. Uh, for me, I, I want to learn. I want the, the news from the uh, real journalists. And I want it from the women journalists. Let's say it, it is the very challenging uh, profession. And once again today, I have some question to uh, the professor. My first question to you about the challenges I, that I have heard uh, so far. What can the women themselves, what can they do to give themselves opportunity to, to, to be successful in their work, their profession, and to contribute to the society, to really get benefit for their own family as well. What can they do? And in the case that the women face such challenges, whether is there any organization or, or how can the government do like immediate intervention to assist the uh, women journalists. Who, who can uh, they ask for help? Is the violence occur immediately during the time that they are traveling to get the news? If there could be accident, I mean a, a working accident, any institution, any uh, one can uh, provide uh, immediate intervention to assist them, to help them. My third question, generally, the uh, profession, this profession for the women is challenging already. So again, have the government promote or encourage anything to the women uh, journalists at what level? Should the women become uh, the jo women journalists? Uh, thank you for the listener from Kampung Cham's three question. Professor, okay, uh, for Soriya, two questions. I think it might take more than one hour. Um, let me brief uh, first uh, to avoid it. And I think it's similar to the second um, listener as well. How to avoid it? Generally, uh, the women uh, journalists that have the uh, challenge, it's not just in Cambodia. Even we talk, we see the ASEAN contact, it's also challenging, especially uh, the um, journalists, the uh, independent journalists that they struggling very hard like uh, to really investigate and go deep into the problem. In the Western country, it's also challenging. That's why the editor newsroom, uh, they uh, uh, limit what level of information uh, news that the women should go to collect to avoid the problem to to, uh, f to the female journalists let's say the hot the hot news and there are different level of hot news let's say press conference of, of course they might send the women but if it is the case like uh, the uh, demonstration uh, the serious accident or, or, or danger or the fire, they rarely send the women. This is like the tendency of the uh, institution, media institution in the world. Uh, mostly the women uh, make like the report, the long story, like uh, I mean the long report that they might take a couple of days to write that report or maybe a short interview in the studio or maybe interview directly in the office of the uh, source person. So this is like the common trend that we can uh, uh, see and 
the, and it ensure a safety for the uh, women journalists to avoid the harassment, as we discussed earlier. Especially, uh, we send the women to work in education, in economy, or in uh, politics. They can do politics as well. But except somewhere that is hot, because for politics or hot news, it's not just women. There are men there as well. So if it is hot, then they send the men instead. Traveling to the province, uh, in some provinces that uh, the tourist side, we can send the women. But if like to really go deep and investigate, let's say about deforestation, illegal logging, we would not send the women there. This is the uh, ethic, ethic, ethical issue for the uh, editor in chief, in uh, order to organize their own office. That is the the way to avoid uh, the uh, problem for the uh, female, for the women journalists. And the women journalists themselves need to be aware what could be the risk for themselves. And they, they should protest, right? If they they don't protest, I mean, they will just use you for anything. So in a simple word, I would say, uh, if you are just okay, agree, and they, they will just use you. So the women themselves have to take care of themselves. And second question, uh, what can we do? Like the Guardian uh, news, uh, there was technical uh, problem. I used to have some technical problem myself. It's not the intention of the uh, media, but uh, it's the source of information. Because that information, I mean that news, is um, important and need, need, need to be released uh, 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 immediately, right? This is the market for journalists, right? Breaking news, it needs to be immediately, very soon. So without verification, so the uh, release um, uh, resulted in the mistake. The mistake of the journalist is did not verify because the source person told a lie. So, but the law on the uh, 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 media profession and in Cambodia and overseas as well, if uh, there was a mistake, they can like correct it later. So, that's why sometimes the big news or the hot issue do not trust the media that much. Uh, for something big, don't trust the media uh, soon. Yeah, because sometimes the media can correct themselves, but you yourself cannot correct yourself. So the media have a, a, a right to correct it. So how to make a good uh, news? Uh, this point is important. Many people ask about it. Remember that the good news, there are three different components. And the answer are different. It depends on the uh, the uh, tendency and the policy of your institution. If you are you have tendency on the left, then you write about left. It's on the right, then you write about right. But however, there is the common. The good uh, news is the news that serve the general public, regardless uh, who are the listener, who are the reader. Do not serve one small group. However, we can see that whatever we give to people, uh, we need to make sure it has value. Uh, uh, the uh, organization or agency institution, right? when uh, you write some things about them, sometimes they have like tip for you. Or sometimes if you write something, that problem, or the owner of that, that money might have problems. Sometimes uh, the journalists ignore, ignore to, to write about that person. Let's say one uh, uh, a telephone, big telephone company, they uh, spend thousands of US dollars to advertise in your studio. But there was like uh, something wrong in news about that that company. Then you would not release it, right? Because they spend thousand to support your operation. So again, there is still more or less a um, tendency in terms of like sympathy. However, if the that news that a uh, problem still affect the public, you cannot hold it. If it is uh, small, sometimes you just close your eye. But sometimes uh, the big one you have to release. So to make a good news, it has to be comprehensive. It has to be completed. It has to be justice, fair, to see whether would it affect the innocence 
would it um, result it in someone suffering from it? So again, it, the good news is the news that serves the public. If it is about agricultural topic, raising pig raising, of course, pe people listen and know about it, understand it. So again, in a simple words, uh, it's the news, professional news, it has to be uh, comprehensive and uh, neutral and do not have any intention to attack on any side at all. We know that sometimes there is like we call protocol news that follow the protocol, but however, the balance is still the requirement. Let's move to the question of Serena. Your first question. Uh, the same as uh, uh, the previous one, what can the women uh, journalists do? I, I know that the women have a lot of problem, but the same as men, they need to strengthen their own capacity. Let's say uh, about education, uh, you study that high and you might take time to study more to increase your own uh, capacity. And that time, men, especially uh, your colleague, uh, cannot uh, look down on you. And you also have higher salary with that education. Uh, so when the women journalists go to fulfill their work and they face the problem, who can help them? Uh, accident happen at any time, anywhere, coincidentally. But... Uh, uh, to manage the problem. For example, if it is about road accident, I mean, uh, society can help them. But if the women work there, I mean, the institution is the one that should take responsible for the uh, journalists. But let's say other work incident, abuse, or right violation, the government of Cambodia, especially some like they just announced that uh, through a uh, Ministry of Information request to have the lawyer free of charge to defend the uh, uh, journalists. So if there have been abuse, not just a uh, uh, woman journalist, but a uh, general man as well, uh, there are the group of a uh, uh, lawyer to defend uh, the journalists for free. Uh, and uh, how can the uh, 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 government uh, promote it or encourage it, uh, we can talk later. But I think there are many different mechanisms as well. And there are a lot of association of journalists. They can help each other. There are many NGO working with the uh, women as well. Women journalists are also women, right? So uh, they are the journalists, but they are still women. We have many see of women affair, right? And uh, there are many... Uh, affair that uh, have been uh, uh, done to promote the women. Thank you, uh, Professor. Now let's meet another uh, audience, Mr. Vise. Uh, Vise, where are you from? I'm from Phnom Penh. So uh, please, Vise, uh, uh, Professor, uh, I have the impression on I mean, strong impression on women issue, because right now, uh, when the women get the news, I think there is a high risk for them. I think uh, I want to ask um, if uh, in Ministry of Information, do they uh, have like category? What kind of information should hand over to the women journalists? What kind of information to hand over to the men? Or um, uh, should they just send anybody to uh, get any kind of news? For example, there was a tycoon that have the uh, problem. And do women journalists go very close to the tycoon? And if uh, she released that information that might have a terrible uh, uh, danger on herself, like uh, is there any consideration to send the man instead of that woman, like for sensitive cases? Uh, that's all. That's all for my question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, professor, please. I'm not going to answer on behalf of Ministry of Information, but I, as I know, Ministry of Information do not have any 
uh, authority to to manage in detail on the uh, media institution, even AKP, uh, Cambodian uh, TV channel, as I know, they uh, do not require uh, uh, the TVK or government TV what to do. I mean, the director of TVK, AKP, they are the one to make decision uh, for their own staff. They have newsroom uh, management. They have, it's like the... Um, uh, board uh, that manage at a uh, news office. Uh, generally, for the uh, private, uh, even the private institution, they do not have such things. Let's say PNN, uh, Radio 102, right? It doesn't seem like, um, for example, it, it depends on the uh, management of the uh, assigning editor. Assign, assigning editor, they are the one who manage. In a simple uh, word, they are the one who manage on the journalists. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, the one who manage on the uh, uh, sector, they know who are ex uh, expertise in what sector and manage the people accordingly. Someone expertise in economy, politics, or uh, social analysis, uh, uh, crime, uh, road, uh, traffic. So um, uh, uh, mostly those kind of social one they uh, place the man there. Just just uh, what I know, and in order to avoid the problem, I can see that they like to place the woman to work in the studio as the news uh, presenter. Sometimes they edit in the room, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's say the special interview, uh, appointment to interview the this uh, tycoon, the officer, the teacher, the expert. Then they send the um, women journalist and men along as well, if it's not crowded. So it's in the studio safe, right? Uh, so this is also the way to avoid the risk uh, for the uh, women journalists. Uh, apologize if uh, I do not answer straight to your question. Kunti, you can add anything if you wish to. Uh, thank you. Nothing. Uh, we, uh, uh, I think you answer to the question about how to divide news and uh, journalists. We have another uh, no name audience call in. Uh, my respect to uh, Professor Chai Supal. I have a couple of questions that I want to ask you. Because um, I hear very often, very often that I hear that media is the first power. Is it true? I'm not sure if it's yes or no. It's a false power. And I want to ask um, the speaker in terms of the attitude or behavior of the journalist toward the spokesman. Uh, oh, what are the difference when the spokesman um, respond or communicate with the media in terms of like sensitive questions or when they are asked uh, some kind of like a question, sensitive or non-sensitive, um, the uh, behavior of the journalist. How how can we, we really do to probe so that the spokesman can really answer, give them the answer? Uh, number three, the uh, spokesman, uh, generally, uh, they are from one ministry, one institution, and the journalist can also be someone under the uh, institution or can be the freelancer that they just uh, collect news anywhere but they are not uh, under any institution but uh, they might have the license or maybe they are under the institution so I want to ask uh, between the spokesman and the journalist what are the different and for the sensitive news like the speaker mentioned earlier, uh, women 
we, we don't want to send them to get the news from someone dangerous or someone uh, somewhere difficult, right? But in necessary case, if that institution do not have uh, the media, uh, the journalists to really go there because everyone have gone. So, is it really necessary to still send the woman there? It's just a question for the speaker, please. Uh, thank you. Now we meet uh, one la, uh, uh, audience, uh, Sister Chantala from Siem Reap. Uh, uh, thank you. I haven't listened from the beginning, but I listened a bit before that. And uh, Chum Reap Sua to the speaker as well. Uh, let me cut you off a little bit. Now we discuss about the challenge of the uh, women journalists in Cambodia. Okay, let me just uh, ask one question because of the time. I hear the speaker mention that like the uh, uh, illegal logging crime, then it, there is a high risk for women uh, journalists. I want to ask you back, when the women journalists go to get the news about illegal logging, when people see that uh, they carry the lock uh, illegally carry the lock out of the uh, forest and the local authority or uh, uh, government authority do not collaborate with the media, the journalists. So in that case, the youth, the journalists, uh, how can they have motivation to struggling? They are the uh, journalists, they play a very important role. They are like the social uh, detector. Why don't they uh, uh, collaborate with them? Sometimes they uh, are threatening by the local authority. So this is my short question. I haven't heard from the beginning. Uh, I reserve some other question to uh, later. I might ask it some other question later. Uh, thank you, uh, Gunti. Uh, thank you, Chantala, uh, Professor. Please make it short. Let me answer to Chantla's uh, question. I'm not the local authority, but however, maybe next time you can invite the authority. Uh, let me say the uh, risk for the women uh, journalists to uh, collect news from the province. Let's say it's a long distance. If they travel with their colleague, it's okay. But if they go alone, or maybe two women together, you know, it's challenging, right? In a simple word, not many women would like to do uh, to work as a journalist. They rather sit down and sell lotion through uh, uh, online, right? And now you ask them to travel that far to get news and illegal logging. Illegal logging, it doesn't happen in the city. It's in the jungle, in the middle of the forest. In rainy season, it's uh, raining, it's muddy, slippery road. At night time, it's so difficult. That's why we do not send the uh, women journalists. But there are still the women, the young women journalists that would like to take the risk. They 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 want to challenge themselves and to get the uh, merit for their profession. Uh, it's their uh, it's their own decision. However, the manager will consider in detail and uh, really uh, consider the risk on those uh, women uh, journalists uh, to collect news from the remote area. Uh, normally, we said uh, live without news, it's like the uh, music without a melody. I hear the voice. I know, uh, I know his voice. Um, okay. Uh, but now let me answer to the, the unknown uh, audience. Actually, the spokesman and the um, journalist, like His Excellency Minister uh, used to mention, they are, they are together. It, it's like the currency, right? One side each. It's like the currency, right? Let's see, now we have the 30,000 uh, real currency. One side of uh, the former king, the other side is the prime minister. So these side are together. They, they don't really meet together. I mean, they, they work in different ways. The journalists collect the news to release, to disseminate to the uh, public, both negative and positive. But the spokesman, the good spokesman, 
they are someone that bring only good news from their own institution, their own ministry. They hide the negative point. This is the common principle of the spokesman all over the world. Even in a Pentagon, I mean, the White House, they never say anything negative or bad about their government. Uh, let's uh, look at the uh, attitude or behavior between the two. The journalists have right to ask what they want to ask, but the spokesmen also have right to not answer. They both have rights. And if we think that the news is good, and we ask the spokesman, but he does not answer, and that topic, let's say, about uh, deforestation. The spokesman of um, Ministry of Agriculture, they would not speak, right? So look for the spokesman of Ministry of Environment. If environment do not speak, go to the uh, 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 police, the um, because it related to transportation. So you need to have different way to get the news. And of course, the journalists have right to ask. The spokesman also have right to not answer. Of course, uh, in common way, the uh, um, uh, spokesman will try to answer in a protocol way uh, uh, to kind of um, uh, to to bring in the accused or to ensure the good collaboration with the journalists. Uh, the other question about uh, media is the fourth power. I've been to about thirty country: United States, Australia, Germ Germany. Uh, I never heard people call it as the fourth power, and very few in Asian country. Let's say the first power is um, legislations, second, ex executive, third is the court. Those three institutions uh, are paid by the government. And now, if you want to become the fourth power, are you going to take salary from government as well? And if you become the uh, 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 public servant, you, you will serve public as well. And let's say beside those three uh, power, uh, if there is any gap, any uh, thing that they are overlook, the media, the journalists are the one that's going to look for it, especially to observe um, something that happened in the society, that the uh, authority at the uh, local authority at the grassroots level that they hide it. So the the journalists, the media are the one that try to to dig it up, uh, something that hidden by the grassroots level, so public can be aware and the leader can be aware. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Pro Professor. We have one last question. Uh, we discussed a lot of uh, focus on the challenges for the uh, journalists. Uh, you uh, mentioned already uh, the audience also uh, probe on it. I want to know for the if the women uh, journalists uh, is safe, they get respect of their right when they fulfill their work. What is the benefit? Uh, generally, we said that women are the mother of the world. If the women are the mother of the world, the women journalists are there. If the mother have a lot of benefit, they do not have a risk. The world, the family of the world will uh, meet the good thing as well. So in total, if the uh, women uh, journalists are safe, it's even better. If they have better safety, our society will be better because if, uh, let's say, if we want to write about the women, we, uh, if we write about women's health, um, it might not good for men to write about it, right? Even to describe in the uh, article, it may be difficult. So women understand better about women, uh, much better than men. Men might know about it as well, but uh, women uh, seem to be able to write uh, deeper. So again, uh, gender is crucial, and particularly uh, for the uh, women uh, journalists. If they have enough rise if they have enough encouragement from the family from the community and from the society they will be uh, happy and they shall be able uh, to uh, to bring in a lot of good article to release on time 
uh, investigation uh, analysis, especially all the problem uh, related to women, violence against women, abuse. Um, the success of the women, they shall be able to broadcast it to the society. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, because right now, uh, a 120 minutes um, program discuss about the challenge of the uh, uh, women journalists have come to the end. We can see that there are many different uh, challenges that the uh, women uh, journalists uh, face. Uh, through um, uh, the uh, uh, presentation of uh, Ms. Jim Sotiri, who is the researcher that uh, focuses on violence and abuse against the women uh, journalists, uh, and through the uh, comment from Professor Chai Sopal, and as we hear from the audience, we can see that there are a lot of uh, challenges that uh, they face, and when the uh, women uh, journalists um, uh, when they are safe, they have their right uh, respected uh, to fulfill their task as a journalist. It will give a lot of benefit to the society. They can concentrate to write the article that is meaningful, especially the news. Some news that is relevant to the women, only the women themselves can write it the best. But much better than men because men might not know in deeply about the women and the challenge. Uh, the, as the woman. We ran out of time. I would like to thank to a uh, professor for taking your valuable time to join with us. Thank to the audience as well, Sukunti and uh, the team. Thank you.